can we please get a huge welcome for the iconic Winnie Harlow? Woo! There she is. <laughs> it just got a hell of a lot louder in your ears, Winnie. I'm very sorry it didn't, about it cut that. Out, it cut out um, for because it, it got really loud, so it cut out. So it was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Winnie. You look amazing. Thank oh you. Oh my god. Thank you. I so can't much. believe I'm actually. I mean, I wish this was vir this wasn't virtual, but I'm sat across from a supermodel right now, and I don't know how to act. <laughs> Thank you. That is so sweet. You look gorgeous, by the way. Your makeup's bomb. Oh, thank you. I'm thinking I wish they'd have got me a glam team in. If, do you know what I mean? Being sat next did to Winnie Harlow, I wish they got me a glam team in. I did do this myself oh, wow. just for you. Okay. Fab. I'm going to take it. Yeah, I'm going to take good. it. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to talk all about how to be a super model. So first of all, let's get straight on about you. Like everybody wants to know what goes on in a supermodel's life. So tell me, what's your day to day like, Winnie? There is no such thing as a day to day, I think, in like <laughs> a typical model's life. Like, yeah, you could be doing a shoot, you could be doing a runway, you could be traveling, you could be chilling at home. Like there's no regular day to day. There's something different every single day. It keeps it keeps you on your toes, keeps it, it exciting. It really does. Like the other day, um, I I shot two days in a row my uh my Halloween looks. And then my, mm. my team was like, okay, cool. You could have a sleep in because it was like 13 hour days each day. Wow. And um, <laughs> and the next morning at like 9, 8 a.m. or whatever, uh, I got a call from them like, okay, cool. So you're leaving to go to New York tomorrow. And I was like, what, what happened to my sleep, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you we're going to be me like a few more hours to <laughs> let me know this. <laughs> <laughs> woke me up out of my sleep after two 13 hour shoot days oh my word and there was 13 hour shoot days were they just for your halloween outfit looks yeah i mean you looked fire so they're definitely you. worth it yeah you know definitely both worth looks it. had to do with like body paint and like mm. really intricate stuff so a lot of that like the time went into the glam um wow and then we we shot pretty quickly i mean we, we shot for a few hours but we we shot pretty quickly i think for me especially on my own creative product um pr projects mm. i i shoot really quickly because i see the shot that i want i know the shot you know that what I want. you want exactly i know the shot that mm -hmm. i want i i'm in direct communication with the team that i've created so like i i want to see their vision as well and and bring that to light um but it's easier, I feel like, when I'm a part of, like, the creative to get shots mm. easier because I know what I'm looking for. Like, it's harder you when, you, like, vision. the photographer or the company knows what they're looking for. And I really am just there, like, okay, what do I do? Like, is there something specific <laughs> Somebody <you> direct me. <laughs> yeah. So what's the, like, most glam moment of a model's life, of Winnie's, Winnie Harlow's life? And what's the least glam moment? The most glam moments would be the big red carpets, like the Met Gala, mm. Cannes Film Festival, like that. And Cannes Film Festival is my favorite carpets to do. Like, Wait, tell me what it's like. What is it actually like? Okay, so whenever I first came to California, when I was, I think, I think the first time I came out here was 19 or 20. Wow. And I shot a music video for this artist named Jameson. It's one of my favorite music videos other than Beyonce, of course, that I've done. <laughs> um, it was the wow. first music video. It was one of the first jobs I ever did. Um, really, really cool video. And I landed and I would like, you know, saw the Hollywood sign and saw in and out And I was like, this is cool, but it's not what I expected Hollywood to be. Because when I think Hollywood, I think Marilyn Monroe and old mm -hmm. school Cadillacs and like that type of vibe. So the first time I went to Cannes Film Festival, it gave me that like old school Hollywood mm. feel that I was expecting when I came to Los Angeles. Obviously, like Los Angeles is like modern day. You know what I mean? It's not like old school Hollywood. It's new day Hollywood. But Cannes it. has it. that old school glamorous Hollywood vibe. Mm. Oh, I, absolutely beautiful. And mm -hmm. what about the least glam moments? So like you were talking then early call times, not getting your sleep. Yeah. What would you say is the least glam moments of being a supermodel? Those might be the most annoying, but they're not that, <laughs> they don't really have to do with like glam. I think the, the yeah. least glamorous thing that has to do with my career is I get really nervous when it comes to like doing red carpets. Uh, not red carpets. Um, really? Not red carpets, runways. Red carpets are easy for me. I love doing... Uh, red carpets runway mm -hmm. 
is so terrifying to this day. Like anytime I have to walk a, a fashion show, I'm like, don't trip, don't fall, don't like, I'm like in my head, like make sure you get the walk right. What are you gonna do when you get to the end? Make sure you figure that out, da da da. Mm. Like I practice backstage, all that. Um, but I have to shit like every time I walk a runway. <laughs> Find me a bathroom before I go because <laughs> get that nervous, get that nervous yeah. toilet break out nervous of there. Gut. Yeah. <laughs> no, I get that, but do you know what? It's so mad to hear you say it because obviously, like you're human, of course you yeah. are, but like you just wouldn't even expect it. But I mean, it's got to be pretty terrible. I mean, I could not walk down a runway. I'm not gonna like honestly. I would be, I'd be on my face. I would definitely it's not scary. make it to the end. It is scary, but it's so empowering <gasps> wow. as well. And I think yeah. focusing on that helps too. Mm. once you've used the bathroom focusing on how you know <laughs> empowering it is and how beautiful it is and also it's really fun to walk for a designer who kind of has like a mm. a story to tell with their fashion i mean every designer has a story to tell but when that collection mm. you can really feel the story and sometimes a designer will tell you like what they were thinking the thought process and why wow. they chose that outfit for you to walk with and that kind of gives you like the energy to like put into your walk and make it different, mm. make it your own. I remember one the one time that I, I really felt like, okay, I know I'm gonna have fun on this runway was uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier in his last show. Mm. He was standing at the, sh at the front of the line before we would walk out and gave us a pep talk right before we would go out. And he was like, this is your moment, make me proud. You're gonna kill it, give it your all, give it everything, do whatever you want, have fun. Like give this energy, give this energy. And it was just like, okay. It gave me direction, I love direction. Mm. So mm. it gave me direction and I kind of felt like I know what he wants, I know what to give. Sometimes you kind of like don't really know what to give, you know, like you go into a casting or something and they're just like, okay, go ahead, you can walk. And you're like, okay, do you want like, a fun walk. Do you want me to smile? Do you want sexy? I've got so many walks want, to There's offer. so many walks to choose from. <laughs> Which one are you really, are you looking for, you know? So. I love that though. I got like actual shivers thinking like of being, you know, having that kind of pep talk beforehand. Cause I guess you just connect to, to that moment. For and sure. Being, being, Another person know, being that does that really well is um, Jeremy Scott. He really mm. like, and of course wow. you can tell that his, his, stuff comes with a story every season 100%. you know so 100 he's really good with that too and letting you know what he's looking for and like um the last show that i walked for him this past fashion week he was like it's giving like ladies at lunch and did it i was like okay cool ladies at lunch all right here we go like, <laughs> ladies pass me my tea pass me my cocktails yeah. i'm going girl i'm going like crump it <laughs> <laughs> wait we just got a british accent from winnie harley there with a crumpet and i'm obsessed my mom's i'm just british. taking that i lived in london for two years wait i knew you lived in london okay when when were you last here in london well i'm in manchester right now not here but when were you last in london um i was in london um what was i there for i was there recently uh, right after fashion week actually i went mm. straight from milan fashion oh, week yeah, back to london were. for that party at annabelle's i was hosting um, wow it's been it's been a busy couple of months for you yeah yeah wow yeah. and we've got you here we've got you here but going back to the runway do you remember the first ever runway show you did the first runway show I did well I used to do runway shows in Toronto <clears throat> and they were like mm -hmm. urban shows you know like um to this day like they're, they're like you know um, one of the guys I used to walk for, he's still a friend of mine. He's like a brother to me. Oh, I love that. His, um, his clothing line is called Nice, Nice Clothing, N-I-S-E. Mm -hmm. And he makes like hoodies and like beanies and stuff like that. So I used to do like little urban fashion stuff before I like really got into it as like a hobby. Mm -hmm. um, the first show that I walked um, in like the fashion industry was for a shish in London for London Fashion Week. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my first show. Do you remember, do you remember like that moment first? Yeah, I the opened runway? and closed like the show. It was my first show wow. ever. I opened and, and closed. And um, I um, I had these really big, like sparkly, they weren't sparkly. They had like gems glued onto them, platform mm -hmm, heels. Mm -hmm. And I I tripped, like I, I didn't really trip. I was walking and I hit the front of my foot to the back heel. And Get you. 
like cracked my big toenail and like drip blood down the runway to close the show. Oh my God. There we go. It's not all glamour guys. It's not. You know, I bet. It's not. I bet no one know. I mean, I bet you still looked amazing. Yeah. You know, it, it was so painful, tone. but I had to finish that runway. Like I wanted to just hobble off and I literally finished. I turned that corner and I just plummeted to the ground. Oh my God. And I literally just like grabbed my foot and started rocking back and forth. But you know, in that moment when you hit your toe, you want to do it then. And I couldn't, like, I was just like, <laughs> How much does it hurt though, stomping your toe? Like Ooh. it's the most painful the thing. the worst. Like ste stepping on a Lego piece or something. <laughs> Definitely. Awful. What's the biggest lesson you think you've learned through like everything with runway, through your modeling career so far? Like what's the biggest lesson you think you've learned? Um, I think the biggest lesson that I've learned would have to be, well, I mean, this is not really a lesson that I learned. It's something that mm -hmm. I, I talk about confidence all the time, right? And I I think it's possible to be confident every day, just not every minute of the day, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't think this is something that I kind of learned from my career. I think it's just something that I learned in life. But um, I try to be confident every day and I, I promote confidence. But it's also like not something that you um, just buy and then you have it for yeah. the rest of your life it's something that you have to work on every single day so it's like always a learning process you know what i mean like yeah. you you're gonna have bad days you're gonna have good days you're gonna have you know your makeup come to your house and, and beat you down before you do an interview <laughs> and then you feel great and then some days you're gonna wake up and feel super tower tired like i did a few hours ago you know so mm. it's always a back and forth when it comes to confidence it's a journey yeah it's a journey yeah I like that. And you've been- it's Not really a, real a journey. Catalyst. I wouldn't say a journey because a journey has a destination. It's not a journey. Like there's no destination when it comes to confidence. I like that. It carries on, yeah. So it's, it's kind of, yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Every day is it's just getting up and continuing. Like, what is the word for that? It's definitely not journey. I've never heard that, you know, journey's got destination. I like that. Mm -hmm. You're right. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to start like freshen up my vocal <laughs> here. Someone's gonna have to give me some, some more words. <laughs> but you've been a catalyst for change within the industry. And I wondered how you've seen it change as a model yourself yeah. in the past seven years that you have been, you know, modeling as a supermodel, as a household name. Like, how have you seen the industry? change um I, I i came into the industry at a time when there was no one who looked like me mm -hmm. or anything near what i looked like so um it's definitely changed a lot i've i've seen more people who have um more unique looks or yeah. you know not the cookie cutter look because mm -hmm. you know there's beauty in so many different ranges of people um mm -hmm. I definitely feel like there's always room for growth. I think there's still times yeah. when things feel a little bit performative and it's not like um, an ongoing thing. Uh, a lot of yeah. brands are really good with making sure that they are inclusive. And you know, every few years, the designers change for different houses and stuff. So um, like someone who I feel like has showcases a lot of, um, uh, different people, shapes, kinds, sizes, everything is uh, Ricardo Tishi. He is someone mm -hmm. that I love and admire so much. And um, I think he he's really good at, at showing representation and not mm -hmm. in a performative way, in like a really true, authentic way. Definitely. I think I think that's what that's what we want to see. You yeah. know, yeah. everybody needs to have somebody to be able to look up to, whether it's on the TV screen, whether it's in the magazine, whether it's on Instagram. Um, Agreed. Yeah, completely. I think it's so so important. Is there anything you wish you'd known about the industry before you'd started out? I wish I'd known <clears throat> that there wasn't a lot of people in the um, behind the scenes who know how to deal with black hair. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I think I. Do you think that's? Go on. I think I. I. That's the one thing that I really wish I knew, and I. I wish I knew how to deal with that before going in to, the fashion industry. I remember like mm -hmm. even feeling when I was first in the fashion industry, like. I don't want to be white, but I wish I had white girl hair, because like I want to look, just as good as, the white girls do, and I should be able to. Because no matter what race, you're beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
So mm-hmm. why is it that only the white girl's hair looks bomb and all the black girls don't look as good? It's because there's no education in black hair and different textures mm-hmm. for the people who are backstage at shows or for photo shoots and such. So I wish I, I, I'd known that. Um, but even if I did know that, I, I it's not even something that I wish I knew. I, I wish it wasn't something that happened. You know, it was yeah. It just didn't exist. Because if I if I think- knew about it, what what could I have done about it? You know what I mean. But I I wish that it's something that um, people would educate themselves on more. I think that like Definitely. a lot of people are taking heed to it more and more as mm. you know time is going on. But obviously, I I came into this seven years ago. Like I've yeah came in you know with my my real hair. I used to wear my real hair out. I used to wear weaves and like have my leave out and all got damaged, broken off. That's why I wear wigs all the time because like I like to be able to have the option of actually wearing my real hair that's curly and healthy. Like yeah. I don't want to end my career with a head of scraggly hair. So I'm like, you know mm-hmm. what? I'll buy a wig. Y'all can destroy it like you would do my hair. And I could throw it away and buy a new one, and I still got my hair on my head. <laughs> do you do you think it's do you think it has changed in those past seven years? Do you think that people are beginning to educate themselves yeah. better? I definitely do. I so think well. I think when it comes to makeup and hair backstage, there is mm. growth, but again, there's always room for more. There's always, room. there's always room for more. If it's not something that you can do as good as you can do in other races' hair, there's always room to grow. Definitely. You know? Definitely. I think the, the, where they've grown a lot is when it comes to makeup. Because mm-hmm. I remember feeling hideous backstage at shows. Or I used to feel really, really ugly when they would do my makeup. And now I really don't feel that way. I feel like a lot of the times when I go to sit in someone's chair when I'm backstage, mm-hmm. the designer or whoever has like hired the people who do you know, the glam backstage are really Mm -hmm. taking that into consideration when I see the end result. You know, it's still not like the glam that I would do, but that's not the the point. It's not supposed to be Mm. what I would want. It's just supposed to be complementary to my face, my features, and my skin. Definitely. And I think it's, it's something like even I, I I see things, you know, just being on Instagram, following different models, talking about being backstage and, you know, make parties, not having the right skin shades, yeah. not having the right products. And I think at know, this point, if, if you're backstage and you don't have the right skin, like that's not just technique, right? That's yeah. just not having, not being prepared. And that's yeah. not okay. When you mm-hmm. when you don't know how to do a a different texture of hair, that's something that you need to learn and you need to take the time to do that 100%. But if you don't have the right colors, a foundation, that's just, that's that's rude, honestly. Mm. It's lazy. It's, it's lazy. lazy. Like, it's why? It's so lazy. It's so like, lazy. Just why? Yeah, that's what? unacceptable. I think I, I haven't really come across that, but uh, like as of lately, but obviously I'm not the darkest of skin tones. So, I mean, mm. you know, what, back when they would make me look ashy and, and stuff, it was wild yeah. to me because I was like, if you don't have my skin tone, whose skin tone do you have? <laughs> you know? Um, wow. So today, that I really find unacceptable when it comes to makeup, but hair. Hair is something that I feel like needs education, it needs time, and it needs, like, there needs to be workshops and stuff. Like, y'all need to be figuring and is it, it out. They've got, to be out, they've got to be out there. And this is the thing, like, it shouldn't have to be a question to be, that it needs to be available, that mm-hmm. these people, like, the, you know, artists need to know make Or even take the time. Like, know. Fashion Week That's is twice it. a year. Mm-hmm. Go take some classes. We had lockdown. We had a whole lockdown. Go take so, some you know, Not even lockdown, because, like, me. obviously, like, yeah, you can, like, learn everything on YouTube and such, but, like, mm. go take some classes like well this is it if, if that's if that's going to be your craft you've got to be you know you, you inclusive in your craft as well as we are being on on the runway you 100%. know 100 percent. the world is i still like to watch today. like iconic models down the runway i watch myself mm-hmm. down the runway you know like do you yeah i need to be able to see like what i didn't like i even like to have like a mirror in front of me when i'm shooting photo shoots because i need to see <sighs> how I think this picture is going to come out. Like I can be doing something and I think it looks good, but if I can see it and I know it doesn't look good, then I can switch it up. I can like change it or whatever, you know? Oh my God. I would love a lesson with you on how to pose because when you say that, like I'm like, when my friends are taking pictures for the gram, I'm like, yeah, I look good. Then I look at the picture and I'm like, what? Yeah, it can happen Why to anyone, Why is my body honestly? not doing? 
<laughs> it can happen. I'm Especially a, as a model too, like you don't want to, you don't you want to switch it up. Like there's times mm-hmm. when like I'm doing really awkward poses and stuff, mm-hmm. and like you want to be adventurous and try new things, but like That's you it. also want to make sure that it looks good, right? Or it yeah. looks interesting or whatever that you might think in your head <laughs> it looks like, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Hey guys, going to interrupt this episode for a quick Pretty Little Thing message. The PLT Pink Monday party isn't over yet. You can still bag yourself some incredible deals on site right now with up to 75% off every single thing, plus an extra 10% off using Pink 10. And so Winnie, with your job and with like the supermodel career that you have, obviously comes the public eye, which I know you're no stranger to. So what is it actually like being Winnie Harlow, being a supermodel in the public eye? Um, <clears throat> I think it's it's pretty cool, but um, I think it's just like weird when people think that they can have an opinion on every aspect of your life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I can't even imagine. Yeah, like there's people who become kind of stalkery even when it comes to like stuff like relationships and like, mm-hmm. you know, like... Um, it just becomes weird sometimes that people like kind of put their two cents in situations. And I'm like, all you know are the happy pictures, you know, that people post yeah. online. You don't know mm-hmm. anything that's going on in anyone's life, be it with their family, their relationships, their friends. You have no idea. So mm-hmm. how can you fix your mouth to judge a situation that may happen when you haven't lived it or judge a person based off of pictures that you've seen Mm -hmm. you know this is it with with like social media i feel like everyone just thinks they're entitled to their opinion and to and thinking that they know what's going on in your life which of course we don't yeah for sure and that's your right to have your privacy and you know yeah do you think you'll ever get used to that no i don't think i'll ever get used to it Mm -hmm. but like i also like I don't care that much. Like, obviously I care, but I also like, I have my family, I have my friends, I have like, I actually, we live real life. You know what I mean? Like there's only so much time that you look at the comments or you're on social media Mm -hmm. or you're on Twitter, whatever the case is. There's only so much time that you're doing that. Like after I get off my phone, I'm like, watching a movie with my friends, cracking jokes, living life, yeah. you know? So like, it's it. it's only a small aspect of life anyway. And while if you do spend too much time on it, it can really get to you. That's when it becomes. Yeah, like- yeah, for sure. Um, but it's like, I'm living life still. Like we're, we're all living, we're, we're all, I always life, say this guys. to people. I'm like, yo, we're all on a floating rock, like just chilling mm-hmm. until it's kind of morbid, <laughs> but until we die. So like, yeah. Taking your two, you know, those those really precious moments out of your life to be like, ah, oh, she's this or ah, oh, he's that or blah, 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 or whatever. I'm like, ah, oh, you could have like created the cure for cancer in those moments or something. Like there's like so If we're going to do it, that's it. Have, yeah, you could have. You only have so much time. time. <laughs> no, I agree with that. I've got a headphone falling out. I'm terribly sorry. That's literally falling out of my ear there. No, but you're so right. I think that's it. Like, you know, there's no, there's no time no need for for people to think they know so much about your life or to even comment on it but I'm gonna have to ask because it's the PLT podcast I want to know Winnie what is it like to date a supermodel what is it like (laughs) to date Winnie Harlow I'm Um, dying to know (laughs) you know it's funny (laughs) one of my one of my old exes reached out to me Mm. recently and it was really weird to me like he we hadn't spoken in years um and he just wanted to talk like he was just like you know I feel like we left things off in a bad way like we didn't really Um, not in a bad way like we never really had like an angry relationship like if if we saw each other mm. we'd say hi but we were good friends right yeah and he was just like you know I felt like you taught me a lot um about being in a relationship when we were younger that I didn't receive because we were so like I was so immature well he Mm. not me but he was so immature and I really like received that and I was he was like you know there'd be times this is when I lived in London he was like there was times when you would ask me to come and visit you but like I'm a demanding person I'm a strong person he would be like there's there'd be times when you were like yo come and see me in London (laughs) 
<laughs> no. And he Tell was him like, how it is. Yeah, Tell like that's how is. I am. I'm like, if I want love, I want love. So like, I'm demanding. I'm like passionate, you know? And he was mm-hmm. like, I didn't even receive it as that. I took it as like, ah, oh, she's being, you know, too aggressive with me and da 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 and she wants me to do this. Well, I'm going to do this instead. And I was like, is that where your mind was at them times? Like, it's cool for me to like understand it now as I'm older. Yeah. But I think that's kind of how I am still in relationships. Like, I'm very like direct. I'm very um, like, I'm, I'm more forceful. Like, I want like I want you to know how I feel. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> my my uh, my hairdresser says I have big D energy when it comes to guys. <laughs> And that I need to soften up. I need to soften up a little bit and be a little bit more dainty with guys. No way. Listen, tell him how it is. You ain't getting walked all over by a man. Absolutely not. She's she's a strong woman. She knows what she wants yeah. and she's going to get it. That's, yeah. that's, that's the energy we need. I think I can be like very, you know, submissive and like girly and stuff when it comes to a guy. But then I'm just like, also, like there's 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 two two sides to this, right? You know what I mean? You've got like, to have that balance. you got to be a balance. <laughs> and what's your what's your perfect like date night if you could if you could design a date night how would it look my perfect date night is dinner at nobu i really love nobu i mean it's, it's all a, right it's you know what place. let's go to nobu yeah book a reservation Thank you, babe. There we go. Winnie, Winnie's going to finish the podcast with a no But before yeah. you go, Winnie, because I know you're tight to time, I've got yeah, to yeah, quickly no, talk about PLT. Got to have a little chat about PLT because you've done some really cool things mm-hmm. with PLT. You obviously had your collection, which was shot in Barbados, directed by Tiana Taylor. You had your event, which let me tell you, I was quite jealous that <laughs> us in Manchester weren't able to fly it out there. Good. I mean, wow. Tell good. me. Tell me everything about it. Um, yeah, you know, we, we, flew, to, um, we, we flew to... The Bahamas to shoot. Mm-hmm. I really wanted my collection to be very tropical and Caribbean because I'm Jamaican. I wanted to represent that. Um, and you know, we we shot in the Bahamas heat. It was very hot. Uh, mm. Tiana was there, creative directing as she does, and it was incredible. You know, like to be able to have a good friend of mine there who I trust, I love, and I admire um, helping me bring this collection to life was such an honor. Um, She's such an incredible mastermind. And I feel like anything that she touches turns to gold, you know, alchemist. It absolutely does. um, Absolutely does. And I mean, that collection was fire. So congratulations on that. I mean, it's take, I I wanted to catch up with you before, but you know, we're we're here, we're talking about it now. Tell me, tell me what's the reality of shooting like on location. So in that heat, what's the reality like? Is it as glamorous as it looks? Just at the mercy of mother nature when it comes Mm. to location (laughs) shoots. Um, It it was raining on and off when we were there, when we were shooting the whole time that we were there it rained, but on and off it was raining and it was super hot. So that humidity was real. It took a lot of touch ups to get you know, you would hair never and know makeup touch ups. I tell you, you would never know. Yeah. The BTS was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. They did a really good time. And we had to time things, you know, like we would see and hear the storm coming and be like, okay, quick change. Like there was <laughs> sometimes there was everybody in the room and I would just throw <laughs> off my clothes and throw on the new look. I'm like, I don't care who's in here. Like we need to get the shot before the rain falls. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was really cool. Um, that was a cool shoot. That was a really fun shoot really proud of that the party was incredible Mm. again giving that caribbean jamaican vibe very dance hall we even Mm -hmm. had that like a whole mock swing from that my favorite picture of the campaign we had like a little mock swing that people could take pictures with and had tons of jamaican flags everywhere um had zach bia who was a good friend of mine asked him to come dj um who's the other dj arch Oh, yeah. I, well, I, I don't know the DJ, but they were really good, too. I don't know them personally, so I don't know their name, but they were really good. Um, also had uh, Offset come and perform. Mm. Doja Cat came and performed. Um, Jack Harlow came and performed and, like, gave a little speech about the first time he met me, which was crazy because I didn't even oh. remember that I had met him years ago. <laughs> And he was just like, you know, when I got the call oh. to do this, I was like, I have to because it's full circle. But actually, if you look at pictures of Jack Harlow, 
He gets cuter and cuter with time. <laughs> He's definitely got cuter in time. Yeah, 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 I agree. Yeah, I agree. So <laughs> I don't think I would have He's remembered. In his right now. Yeah, I don't think I would remember because he looked very different. Like he was cute wow. then, but like he the evolution of Jack Harlow, he just like has multiple puberties, I think. <laughs> He's in his prime right now, like Jack Harlow. It's safe yeah, to yeah, say, yeah. like TikTok, everything. He's yeah. definitely in his prime. He's uh, he's blown up yeah, at the minute, super hasn't sweet. he? Super, super, super. For sure. Oh, I'm so excited. Have you heard um, Love is Dro off of his album? Oh, no, wait. Do I need song. to listen? I literally commented. He just dropped the, the music video and I commented on his page. And then I saw him the next day at jo- Doja Cat's party. And he was like, you love Love is Dro? And I was like, bro, I could tell that he's raised in the same era that I was raised in because it's giving that mm-hmm. like pretty Ricky like you know like that era of uh-huh, music uh-huh. is giving that and that's Old school so my vibe I'm listening to that when I get off this podcast I li- they listen that's me going home I'm gonna drive home and yeah, listen to that yeah. it's like I'm, gonna, mid, I'm gonna let you know how it is how I think it is so good I love that I love that the party looked insane like honestly I think I'd go as far to say I'm gutted I wasn't there it was I think it was probably one of the most lit PLT parties I've ever seen yeah it was really good and I've, it, was really, it, really it good. went off I'm not, it I'm went not gonna off. lie it probably was it probably was the most lit <laughs> she'll take the title now we'll pass the crown in we'll pass the crown in for the I best have my PLT girls party. from Toronto as well and I think anytime I have my girls like my mm. like people from back home that makes That's you have it. a good time too a whole you know? new energy so I love that well before you go Winnie I've really appreciated your time today but let me know what's the plans for the future you're already dominating the industry what are the plans for the future I saw you want to be in a film you tweeted recently I've actually Tell done me what's two going films. on I've, I've done two films I was like I had small parts in them um I've I did a horror film that comes out next year Ooh. and <gasps> I did a like a rom com uh that's starring Wait. <laughs> <laughs> that's starring um Gabrielle Union and Keith Power. We already. Yeah. Are, so you basically manifested through that tweet. No, no, I, I, like- I shot this I shot this earlier this year. Um I shot wow. the horror film I think spring this year and I shot um the rom-com around in in the summer so so both out this i've year. already been like for the past few years right before covid i was taking acting classes when i lived hmm. in new york I, and I'm, during covid i moved to la but i was taking acting classes for a while because i've told my team for a while that that's something that i want to get into i want to get into acting i want to get into movies and stuff my dream is to be either a superhero or a bond girl <gasps> or both and, I can um, see both. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm betting both. Like, come on, let's put it out there. Yeah, I'm, I, those are two things that I'm really, really excited about. So, I mean, wow. excited about what, like, want, you know, for mm. for my my career and and for life. That would gag me. But um, but yeah. So I was taking acting classes for quite some time. I still with my acting coach, obviously, because of COVID, we started doing Zoom classes, and I would read for scripts and you know, all of that and just like figure out the type of scripts that I wanted. I actually got a movie that was filming in, was it in Manchester? I don't know, like it was somewhere out there, but I had to turn it down because it was during COVID and I had to be there for like a month or two. And I was like, quarantine, oh, it was in Leeds. Babe, I couldn't be in quarantine in Leeds. In Leeds? For a month or two. It was like uh, too much for me. But the script, I can't wait to watch the movie. I'm going to be so jealous when it comes out. I know. Oh my God. It sounds like an incredible movie. And I was so honored that they asked me to do the part that I I, I read for. Because it was like a really strong part. But Mm. then when I heard Leeds for a month or two during quarantine, babe, I was like, what am I going to do out there? (laughs) What is Winnie Harlow gonna do in Leeds? Well, any I'm Leeds listeners, do. like any people from Leeds, like yeah. And then I had to like yeah. it was like a you had to quarantine for like ten days oh at God. the time before it wasn't I meant guys, to be. I was like, you know what, guys? <laughs> Honestly, I'm gonna have to turn it down. I'm so sorry. It wasn't meant to be. Do you know what? It's just if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. Another door's gonna open somewhere. Amen. These doors are gonna keep opening for you, Winnie, and I can't wait to see what happens. Thank you. In the next year, in the next, you know, I would, I would do it though. Forever. I would do it in a regular time, but I just feel like in like quarantine yeah. was just a wild time to not be around the people who you could be around. Like I was, exactly. you know, whoever you're living with. Like my friends were here. My um, boyfriend at the time was here. Like mm. it was just a nice little situation for quarantine you never knew when it was going to end i was like 
You don't need that. Mm-mm. You don't need I that. I can't be going depressed, locked up in my <laughs> hotel room. In no, that's it. Quarantine was hard enough. Like lockdown was hard enough. You didn't need to be locked in a hotel By yourself. room in Leeds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Winnie Harlow locked in a hotel room in Leeds. Yeah, that's not, it's not something I'm seeing happen. It's not ideal. It's not ideal. <laughs> Oh, Winnie, it's been an absolute dream talking to you today. Thank, Thank you so you. much for making time for us in yeah, your this schedule. Was fun. Because Thank you so much. I know you're so busy. Really appreciate it. It's lovely to meet you virtually. I wish it was in real life, but thank you so much for your time, babes. All right. Take care. All right. Take care. Thank you so much to everybody for listening. This has been the PLT podcast with the one and only Winnie Harlow.